God damn it, man. This looks so damn good. The LSS4 is beautiful. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. If you've been itching to give Night City a major facelift or just want to tailor your Cyberpunk 2077 experience to your personal taste, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about modding Cyberpunk 2077 from choosing reliable mod sources to safely installing and customizing your setup. But that is not all guys, DLSS 4 has just been implemented into Cyberpunk, bringing some huge benefits for both performance junkies and visual purists alike. With DLSS 4, you can enjoy higher frame rates, sharper textures, and an overall smoother experience, which is perfect if you're stacking up on graphical mods like we are about to. As well as that, we will also talk about how to make sure you are getting the very best out of DLSS 4 while keeping your mod load stable. So grab your cyber deck, get comfortable, and let's dive into the ultimate guide for transforming Night City into the futuristic metropolis you've always envisioned. But before we get started, guys, I should let you know you should be running at least an RTX 3060 um, DLSS 4 will do a lot of the work, but you will still need a good graphics card. And if this has been helpful, guys, please do consider liking and subscribing as it does really help the channel. Thank you very much and let's get started. Now for the beginning of this installation, you can see I am deleting Cyberpunk 2077 and I'm going over to its root folder, which is in Steam, and I'm gonna be deleting all the files that are there because I have the Luke Ross VR mod and a bunch of other mods which need to go so I have a completely clean installation. If you've done any modding in the past, I highly recommend you do the same to make sure you do not have any conflicts. And obviously after doing that, I'm going to go and reinstall Cyberpunk 2077. And I'm doing so on my M.2 drive. It's my fastest SSD and it's going to help enable the best performance. And once you have a fresh install, it is very important that you run Cyberpunk at least once. All you need to do is get to the in-game menu and leave. But the reason why you need to do this is so that Cyberpunk can propagate all the files required for modding to be accessible. And once we've done that, we're going to head over to nexusmods.com. The links will be in the description and we're going to search for Vortex. Now, this is the mod manager that we're going to be using. So we're going to go over to manual install and we're going to make sure that we download the prerequisites, which is the dot network framework 6.0. So download and install that and then download and install Vortex. And once you've done that, we'll be ready to run Vortex and manage our mods. All right, and once you've run Vortex, you will need to go over to games and you will need to find Cyberpunk 2077. So search for it and push manage. Now it's come up with an error saying that this game is not supported, but that's absolutely fine. If I push download, it will download the module required to support this game. And you can see it's just done that automatically and it's ready to support it. But now it needs to know where the game is installed. So if I push continue, actually it's automatically found it in my Ember 2 drive, but you may need to find your installation folder. Uh, luckily it's automatically done it for me, so I don't have to worry. Now, once I've done that, I need to select which store I got it from, be it Steam, Good Old Games, Epic, just so that it knows which launcher to use. Once I've selected it, mine being Steam, of course, I'm now ready to use this uh, Vortex to manage mods. One troubleshooting problem you might have is hard linking. So if you go to settings and go to mods, you might need to create a folder for um, the mods to launch from. However, luckily mine has automatically done that. There's no reason why you should come across this bug, but it has happened in the past and that's how you fix it. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to do is head over to nexusmods.com. Again, links will be in the description and we're going to look for cyberpunk under games. And this is where we are going to get all of the mods 
for cyberpunk this is a brilliant resource and i highly recommend you use it now just bear in mind that when you first download your first mod what it'll do is it'll ask you to authorize a connection between vortex and between nexus mods so make sure you have vortex running in the background when you try it first authorize it and you'll have a link which will allow you to automatically download all of these mods moving forward very quickly so let's download our first mod and i'm going to download the zonda the pagani zonda beautiful beautiful mod awesome car and you saw it in the introduction now i don't want you to get worried or overwhelmed by this section so do pay attention and use the chapters if required but these kinds of mods they require a lot of prerequisites. Once you have those prerequisites, they'll work for all the other mods you download. So you just have to download them once and it's really, really easy. And this is how you do it. Here, I'm gonna try and download the Pagani Zonda. And when I click on manual download, it's gonna show me all of the prerequisite mods. Here they all are. Not to worry, all I need to do is right click and open tab on all of them. So that's what I'm going to do one by one. And these are just support mods. All they'll do is make sure that the mods that I'm downloading are going to work. And there's only a few of them and you only need to do it once. And then once you've done that, the rest will work. So here I am and I'm going to go straight to Vortex. And here I can see Virtual Car Dealer has a few other prerequisites that aren't listed. So I'm going to right click them. I'm going to open them in tab and just make sure that I have all the mods required and that's pretty much everything i think yeah looking at everything that looks like it's all there so i'm going to download virtual car dealer and it automatically links and installs to vortex now i can close that tab i can go on to browser extension and i'm checking the prerequisites they're all there so we're fine push download automatically links straight to vortex and you get the picture i'm on codeware that's another one vortex yep Redis is over there. I've already got it. So if I push download, boom, there it is. It'll automatically install. And that's the beauty of Vortex. It will just automatically install and correctly put everything I need where it needs to be. Okay, guys. So now I've used Vortex to quickly download all of the required prerequisites as listed on the mod. And I have downloaded the mod and I've put it on my desktop. So what I need to do now is I need to go and find where my game is installed, as it says right there. So we're going to go over to Steam. We're going to go over to Cyberpunk and we are going to right click properties. And then we're going to go over to installed files and browse. And this is where we are going to be dropping our mods if we are manually installing them and not using Vortex. So here is the Bacani mod. We're going to extract it. And once extracted, we open it up. And inside there, you'll see archive and you'll see R6. We just drag them in. Now for every manual mod installation, we're gonna do that. Just drop it in. All right, now we're gonna go to the top left of Vortex and we're gonna push the play button. We can delete these files now, we don't need them anymore. We are gonna test to see if the mods have worked. And to do that, we're gonna start the game. It might take a little bit longer than normal to run and that's just because it is propagating all of the mods which we have just installed it's usually just the first time and here we are guys here's one of the mods this is a console mod which um, is a prerequisite actually but um, also a very handy mod so i've set a key there which allows me to use this it's called cyber engine tweaks and i can go into console and i can type console commands such as spawning money or spawning items spawning anything I really need to play the game. However, here I can see the game is working nicely so I can actually go and quit it. All right, guys, so now we know the mods are working. There are a couple of things I need to let you know. First and foremost, one of the prerequisites which you downloaded has put a car shop on the computer in your apartment. So now whenever you want to buy a car, you can conveniently buy one from there. Really nice. Uh, we are now going to go on to the next stage of this modding process and arguably the best stage. We are now going to look at how to set up DLSS4 and how to optimize it the best way, in my opinion. 
And uh, just to remind you, DLSS4 is going to allow you to have the most incredible experience in Cyberpunk without requiring the big GPUs such as the 4090s or the 4080s. All right, guys, here we are. We're in the game. We have the latest version, P2.21, and we're gonna go over to video and we're playing 4K. So of course we have the maximum resolution and we also have full screen, obviously. And for the love of God, please do not turn on V-Sync, okay? Once we're happy with that, we're gonna head over to graphics. Now guys, in graphics, we are gonna keep resolution scaling as DLSS, obviously. We're also gonna set the preset as transformer model. Now this is the brand spanking new model, which makes everything fast and beautiful. We're gonna keep the super resolution as quality. Um, obviously guys, I would try to get away with as high as much as you can over here. Um, but for me, I keep it on quality because I'm running a 4080S and it works pretty pretty well. DLAA is what we used to use and it really is not good anymore. It's The performance is really, really tough unless if you're running a 4090 or something like that. So we're gonna switch this back to um, quality. And I would recommend keeping the DLSS sharpness at 0.25 if you have it too sharp it can look a bit funny sometimes so 0.25 I think is pretty good uh, make sure that you have DLSS ray reconstruction on make sure you have frame generation off very important and then from then on out everything is on high so we're gonna have texture quality high we're gonna have path tracing high uh, ray tracing has to be on uh, path tracing in photo mode yes Crowd density. I mean, if your PC is struggling, you can lower that, but I keep that on high. Um, from then on out, um, keep everything on ultra or on high. Um, this is the best way to have it. I currently have um, film grain and um, lens flare and all of that off because I'm not a big fan of it, but I do keep motion blur on. That's completely preferential for you. However, this is how you set up um, the LSS4 um uh in cyberpunk with that all being set up let's have a little test and see what it looks like all right and here we are in game we are in our pagani zander and this is such a beautiful model uh everything looks so good it's just stunning and the performance is really really good everything is on ultra here we are in the lamborghini and uh again just stunning the rain is beautiful the reflections are incredible um, the the ray tracing is mind-blowing um, absolutely love this um, that's pretty much it guys uh, this is how you add mods this is how you get the LSS4 running if you have any questions please do put them in the comments section or jump in my discord I'm usually active um, other than that I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please consider liking and subscribing. And I will see you in the next one. I think the next video I'm going to do is DLSS4 and VR. See you later, guys. Bye now.